So today, you will be learning one of the topics to producing a quality video lesson that will help our students enhance their learning, especially in this time of pandemic. We'll be giving you fundamentals and tips on how to create a script for our video lesson. And another disclaimer, this script is for a video lesson that we teachers will be doing. This is not a script on how to start a vlog, neither a script for a, mov for a movie that will be nominated for Oscars. Baka yan po ang mga nasa isip natin ngayon. So, again, hindi po. These are the fundamentals and tips on writing scripts for 20-minute video lesson. So, let's get the ball rolling. Before we go and end up into writing scripts, allow me to do some introductions on video. Its strengths and weaknesses the roles each of you has to do in the video production, and some tips on voice performance. Most of our students nowadays prefer watching videos than reading books, or they a lot more time in watching videos than in reading books or any reading materials. It is because videos appeal to both auditory and visual senses. It is audiovisual. It stimulates our eyes and ears, thus ma making videos effective in capturing the attention of the target audience. Second, video can be played back instantaneously. The audience can pause or stop the video anytime. Third, because video is electronic, it can be broadcasted via TV or internet. Also, we get a larger number of audience if it's broadcasted, unlike if we're just inside our classrooms, catering to more or less 55 or 60 students. So, if a video lesson is played on TV, we might have the entire Philippines as our audience. So, yes, not just the, Char the division of Siargao or your district, but for the entire Philippines. Lastly, Video can be used for learning in multiple domains. Most, if not all, of the domains, according to Bloom's taxonomy, are targeted by the video lesson, should be targeted by your video lesson. Kahit video lang yan, we still catch their cognitive, affective, and psychomotor domains. On one hand, using or producing a video lesson has also its bad side. Just like everything else. Producing one video is never done in just a snap of your finger. Yes, it is challenging, pero you will enjoy the whole process. Video is more expensive than other educational media. Yes, it is expensive than printing one set of module. And al although it is economical, meaning we can reuse the footages, it is still expensive depending on how long the video. Second, it is time extensive. I mean intensive. As I've said a while back, we don't produce video in just a snap of a finger. It will take days or weeks. We cannot compromise the quality of our video and settle for sige rakan, okay na na, kana rakan. And third, it requires facilitator learning, meaning it still needs someone or it should have a teacher included in the video. Hindi pwede na puro na lang voiceover and nagiging mysterious na si teacher who is doing the voiceover. Moreover, facilitation can and should be done after the video. If our students have queries about the discussion which was shown on the video, there should be a teacher available whom the student can call or message to. Next, we are hardware dependent. We are so dependent sa electricity because everything needs to be, to be charged or plugged. When, when doing a video shoot, it is but necessary to know the possible power interruptions, mga scheduled brownouts. Another problem may arise is the quality of our raw video. If you think artificial lights are needed, 
like um, ring lights and and anything else like dapat meron din tayo again we should not compromise the quality of the video and of the audio anticipate na rin natin ang area kung saan ninyo gusto mag-shoot kasi kapag maingay maraming noise kawawa po ang mag edit ng video natin and lastly since it is a video lesson, it also needs reception, especially if being broadcasted on TV or internet. Kapag sa TV, uh, mahirapan ang ibang sudyante if they have cable or if they don't have. Or pag masama ang reception because of bad weather. So, one, one of the cons of having video lesson. It is important for us to know the properties of EdTech Media. You should base or anchor your scripts from these characteristics so that it can show learning. First, property of a media is fixative. As mentioned before, it can be watched anytime or any place because it is preserved unless we delete the file. Delicado. Next is, I know, anyway, um, tip sa mga cases nang na, nangyayari yung mga ganyan. What we did with our team is we have multiple of backups. Um, we have many copies of our output final video. Even if uh, we have already in the Google Drive, we also have in our flash disk and also we have backups of our footages of our audio of our raw videos another property of edit media is manipulative according to its definition it can transform the presentation of an object or event meaning we can rearrange the materials or information for purposes of updating change of emphasis or correction our video lesson should allow students to go to a part that interests them. For example, a teacher is showing a microscope so sa mga science subjects like this. So she can directly focus or zoom in to the parts that she is giving emphasis uh, during her discussion. Unlike sa books or pictures, flat lang talaga si microscope. You cannot say naman na uh, to the back page para mas klaro ang image ni microscope. Next is its distributive property. It simply means that we can distribute the same video to others. And to others we mean to all types of students. To others we mean not just to your students, but to all the students of Shargao Division and to the whole country. Yes, mas maganda po if, we, if our produced video will be watched and used by other teachers too. So, it is imperative that our video is inclusive. If in our normal classroom setup, we have students who are deaf and mute and other students who have special needs, in writing your scripts and producing a video, consider these students too. In making your video lesson, we will undergo three processes. And take note, process po yan, so hindi po pwede na mauna si post-production kaysa ni pre-production. Okay? Okay, so let us start with the first process or the pre-production phase. This is, a, uh, in this phase, the scripts are done, editing of the content, applying which music and sound effects are appropriate. SFX means sound effects. In other words, all the activities before the actual shooting is we call pre-production phase and all the the three scripts we have different we have three different scripts anyway we have the narrative the storyboard and the production script yes you will be doing these three scripts also i'm not sure with the storyboard i i guess it will not be um required anymore so let us go to the production phase this is the actual shooting 
all the footages are recorded in this phase. So, mag-video na, mag-record, and everything. This is the production phase. The next phase is what we call the post-production. Everything you do after shooting, so nandito na si video editing. After ma-edit si video, um, the team will preview that so, so that in previewing, we can see kung what are the errors or dapat i-enhance in the video. It is also during this phase when you can decide if you need to reshoot everything or not. It, sometimes, di naman every, uh, everything, as in from top to, from the top ang i-reshoot. There are some, sometimes we'll, uh, the team can decide if, the, if there's a certain footage or scene na medyo blurry pagka video because hindi na bantayan. So, the team can decide, okay, we will reshoot this. Or if there are lines or scenes na dapat i-improve ni talent. But if magagawa naman sa production phase pa, ang reshoot, mat, uh, ang reshoot much better. Okay, ang bilis ng, ng video production process, di ba? There are only three phases. Kayang-kaya. So, in order for you to to complete the three, the three video production phases, we need this people or we need this crew we need the script writer the content editor the illustrator the animator or the graphics artist and also we need the director or video editor and sometimes we need we will be needing other talents if hindi kaya ng limang member sa team okay Script writer or talent. Sky script writer nakadepende how beautiful our video would turn out because you are the, the one responsible in crafting the script. And as a writer, dapat alam mo ang competencies ng lesson. So research. Um, remember, you will be doing a video lesson. So sa video, dapat aligned pa rin ito sa milk. Nang DepEd, of course. Another role of a scriptwriter is being a talent. When we say talent, we mean siya po ang magbabasa ng script, siya po ang, ang artista. Sometimes we say that. However, this does not only this does not apply always. Although ikaw as a scriptwriter, alam mo ang feels ng script. That is why um, it is um, it is better if the script writer is a talent because you know ikaw yung nagsulat eh so alam mo kung anong dapat feelings in this line or for that scene but again it does not apply always like um, sometimes mas hiyang ang ibang member ng team as talent so pwedeng kung feel ng buong team or kung mag agree naman ng buong team na hindi na si script writer ang, ta ang gawing talent Dahil mas may bagay doon, so pwede naman yun. Next is content editor. Madugo din ang trabaho ni content editor. After masulat ni script writer ang script, he or she uh, should submit that to the content editor. Because editor nga po siya, Huwag sana magalit si script writer kung maraming corrections si content editor pagbalik nung script. Ultimong punctuation marks, appropriate words, ay gagalawin ni content editor. Not only will she look after the script, but also the edited video. Minsan, si content editor nakaupo sa gilid ni, ni video editor para mabantayan ang mga bagay-bagay kung ano man ang mga na, nakaligtaan ni video editor sa production script. Next is illustrator. In our video, as much as possible, use original illustrations and drawings. So, the illustrator, the illustrator will make the drawings that will be sent to the graphics artist. So, yes. Tig-draw si illustrator. And then, after the illustrator is the si animator or graphics artist. 
he is responsible for making the drawings move or animate the drawings that came from the illustrator. So, di ba, si drawing kasi hindi pa siya gagalaw nung ginagawa ni illustrator. Trabaho naman ngayon ni graphics artist or ni animator para paggalawin yung mga drawings ni illustrator. Next, and the last but not the least, is our director or the video editor. Siya po ang last end. Last na end pa. No. <laughs> Siya ang tatanggap ng lahat ng mga ginawa natin from pre to production phase. He does the video editing from all the footages taken during the production phase. He mixes the audio elements, so voiceover and music. Si director na rin ang minsan nagsasabi if we need to reshoot footages or redub. Pukunin niya rin ang mga graphics that will be used in the editing. So, parang lahat, ay, di parang, lahat talaga ay may trabaho. Those five people in the team ay may kanya-kanyang trabaho. So, walang sapawan. Okay. Before we proceed, do you have your questions? And if you have, please reserve them later for our open forum. Now we will be talking about the pre-production or the script writing. As a script writer, we should know our audience first, yes. Because if we know the age level, the grade level, the interest and socioeconomic status of our audience, we tailor suit the words that we'll be using in our script. And we will be sensitive also to the different religions because we know our audience. Sayang lang ang video natin, no matter how beautiful it is, if our target audience does not understand the whole video at all. Because, one, pang college po ang words na ginagamit natin or ginamit natin in the video or sobrang complex po ng mga ganap sa video considering that for example your target audience is grade 7 so nakalimutan mo silang i-consider when writing the script because akala mo si script na ginagawa mo ay pang Oscars next thing you need to know or consider before writing the script is the video lesson objective so, same when we are writing our lesson plan, when we have our face-to-face -face classroom, we should always remember that our objective should be smart, meaning uh, specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timely. Considering also that our video lesson will only take 20 minutes Unlike our face-to-face -face discussion inside the classroom, um, sometimes it's up to one hour pa, minsan. So, we should consider and we should know how to digest the module where we base our video lesson, kung which part lang ang isasama, isasama in the video lesson. When crafting the script po, uh, when, when crafting the script, uh, sa module po tayo ng base, modules that are quality assured by the central office. So, ikaw na script writer, dapat wag natin bal baliwala in si milk. So, let's, okay, the narrative script. As what I have mentioned, um, this is one of the three scripts that should be done in the pre-production phase. So, anong meron kay narrative script? A script, uh, this is a script where all the major components of the video can be found. So, nandyan si description, si directorial instructions, si dialogue, sequence, camera angles, the shots used. So, this is an example of a narrative script. Okay, I will show the narrative script that we did last um last last week i hope this is clear so 
so sobraan okay this is our narrative script okay anong meron saan si description jan description is found here from the grade level up to the instructional objectives yan po ang description so nandiyan ang grade level subject type of script and then the title of your video lesson the topic treatment narrative lecture then the runtime is 20 minutes script writer and then struct instructional objectives. Where did I get the instructional objectives? Nasa module po na ginawa na ng mga teachers na approved by the central office. <clears throat> so that is the instructional I mean description part. Next is instructional object. I know. The directorial instructions. I'm sorry. The directorial instructions these are written in all caps, all capital letters, bold, and underlined. So, if you can see, these part here, which are written in bold, underlined, and all capital, are the directorial instructions. My purpose, bakit naka-bold and underlined para mas klaro? Mas madaling mapansin kung ano ang dapat gawin sa part na yan ng video. And then the dialogue, the dialogue are these part. They are written normally, meaning, uh, sorry, dapat they are not underlined. Okay, sorry for that. The dialogue, these are the lines of the talent or sometimes of the script writer during the production phase. And the sequence, when you say sequence, these are the numbers. So, every line my number po. If you can observe, 1 up to, yeah, 1 up to 20. Maximum of 1 up to, uh, maximum of 20 lines per page. Okay. And then, the camera angles and shots are also in the, are found in the directorial instructions. So, FS is full shot. NA is normal angle. Um, this will be discussed deeper later by our, by, a, by another speaker. So, I will not um, dig deeper on this one. That's, uh, this is an example of a narrative script. So, there. Let's go back to the slides. Ay to, claro pala. Claro pala. So, again, the... the The description is from grade level up to the instructional objectives. And the directorial instructions are written in bold, all capital letters and underlined. And then the dialogue, ang mga sabihin ni teacher, ay normal, normal lamang na pagkasulat. No underline, not capital letters, except for names. Mag-capital letter ka lang pag may names, of course. Okay. So, script format. Merong format for uniformity. uniformity. Um, for the font style, let us use courier. But in our case, we did not use courier, if you can observe, kasi I don't have in, we don't have in our laptop. But the font size must be 12 and it should be doubled space. Double space because the si script natin will be edited by, by the content editor. So 
pag may maraming errors or corrections, mas madali i-insert ni content editor. And then the margins, 1 and 1 half inches on the left, and then the rest sa right, top, and bottom, 1 inch lang. Again, si page, you must have at least 20 numbered speaking lines. Pages number at the top right, page number at the top right corner. Yes, if you can observe, we have a page number here. Page 1 of 9. That one. Sa right, top right corner. And then capitalization. Capitalize only names of speakers and directorial instructions. So same. Wag na po natin i-capitalize ang dialogue or ang speaking lines ni talent. Why? When and why we write script? Okay. When you have a lot in mind, write a script. Dapat kasi arrange ang video lesson according to our objectives. Hindi naman, we are not, again, remember, we are not making a travel vlog that is spontaneous. Na kahit ano na lang ang maisip, yun na ang sasabihin. No. Remember, we have an audience na mga bata. So, alam nga naman kahit ano na lang sasabihin natin, walang... Walang patutunguhan. Okay. Why do we have to make a script? Because it will make your video organized. It will save everything in the right order. And you will not bubble. Especially during the production phase. And isipin nyo na lang kung wala kayong script. Like, um, everything or anything goes in your mind, yun ang sasabihin mo hindi kayo matatapos mag-shoot pag wala kayong script because marami kayong may isip na bago and you will retake, reshoot everything pag ganyan ang mangyayari. Uh, having script will save you a ton of time. Okay, tips on script writing. Do not be too formal, too stiff in your video. Be friendly. Dialogue should be in a conversational languages, just like how you talk inside the classroom. Diba? We, should, um, we should not talk too fast and too slow because our, our students will get bored or sometimes makakatulog. Kiss, keep it short and simple, especially the words and the lines of our talent. Write in active voice. Active voice in English, uh, for example, is this one. Um, Anna ate the cake. That is a very simple sentence in active voice. Do not use the passive voice which is the cake was eaten by Anna. Diba mas mahaba si, si, si passive kaysa kay active voice. In Filipino, ganun din dapat. Um, you choose the shorter version of the sentence. And then use vernacular if necessary. Vernacular, it doesn't mean that the whole video will be in vernacular. We will use vernacular if necessary, meaning for emphasis. And because it is vernacular, it should have a subtitle in our video. Because we will consider that our vernacular or our word in the in our dialect does not mean the same in other vernaculars. So, there are many meanings of our dialect. So, let us consider that. So, mas maganda maglagay ng subtitles. Simplify the text, especially figures. In our script, we do not write the figures. We will write the words. Kasi, mas mahirapan si talent magbasa Minsan, makakalimutan niya or mawawala siya. So, much better to save time. Write the figures in words. Audio and visuals must go together, of course. Um, for example, sasabihin ng talent or the script writer na um, open your books or open your modu modules to page 7. Eh, ang nakalagay na visual or graphics sa video natin ay hindi module, kundi faucet. So, wala. Maguguluhan ng bata. Outline your script in a logical order. 
take note of the running time, narrative video or tutorial is 10 minutes, and then video lesson is 20 minutes. Yes, 20 minutes. Target po talaga natin is maximum of 20 minutes. Huwag na po tayong lumampas ng 20 minutes. Pag lumampas ka po ang ating video lesson ng 20 minutes, dapat we should cut some lines and maybe balik tayo sa pre-production phase. Edit, edit the, the script. Okay, we have the script writing jargons. These are the terms that we usually use in our script. OBB or the opening billboard. Si opening billboard, yan yung usually nakikita natin. For example, sa movies. Star Cinema. Sa opening pa. Star Cinema presents. Blah, blah, blah. So, that is the opening billboard. And syempre, because may opening billboard, meron ding CBB or closing billboard. Usually, si closing billboard, nandito, uh, ito yung mga nagbabasa nating mga credits at the end of the video. Okay. Another jargon is fade in. This is a technique whereby an image or music is made to appear gradually. So, these jargons are usually found sa mga directora, sorry, sa mga direct, directorial instructions, these, uh, th these terms. So, si fade out, this is a technique whereby an image or music is made to disappear gradually. Opposite naman sila ni fade in. Kung si fade in ay mag-appear ang music or image gradually, si fade out naman, unti-unting mawawala. Fade to black. This is a technique whereby an image or music is made to gradually fade to black. Usually signifies the end. So, si Fade to Black and CBB, usually, they come together. Pag mag-Fade to Black, so, next niyan is CBB na. And then, Dissolve. This is a technique of moving one picture to another. Zoom in. So, a technique of adjusting the camera lens to make an object, object bigger. Si Zoom Out naman is opposite. We will make the object smaller and farther away. Cut to, this describes a change of scene over one course of frame. For example, in your directorial instruction, you will say there, cut to teacher um, in playground. So, from the classroom, cut to, te cut to playground. So, you know yung background ni teacher. Instead, previous, sa previous frame niya nasa classroom and the next frame niya is nasa um, playground na siya. So, that is cut 2. Okay.